What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's the end of the Premier League season, if you guys want to check out my last review on the Bayern Chelsea match, check it out, it should be the next video on your right. But if you guys want to check out this video as well, 5 reasons why we lost to Bayern Munich 4-1 on aggregate and also 5 things we learned as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G, don't forget to smash the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content and there will be much more new different types of content coming out of the next couple weeks now as well because there won't be any football for the next five weeks football will be coming back relatively quick i'll be real so we're gonna have a lot of football throughout the next 18 or so months to keep us going but there'll be plenty of transfer talk there'll be plenty of link ups with other youtubers and stuff so just stay tuned for more content like that and don't forget to smash the bell notification button again to be the first guy to know whenever i release any new content now let's go straight into five things we learned from Bayern for chelsea one we can't be too negative about this performance, especially looking at everything we had against us going into this tie, but there's still bad points to take out this game. There's still plenty of good points to take out this game as well. We'll start on a negative note because, let's be real, we lost 4-1. It's 7-1 on aggregate. We can't be overly positive about this performance, but we'll end on a good note. So, we'll start negative, we'll go positive, we'll just move on from there. Let's start with the first point. Mateo Kovacic. Not the ball magnet we've been seeing from him all season. He was very sloppy, especially in the first half. I thought the first, the foul for the second goal was just the pinnacle on his poor performance. And he improved a little bit after we changed to 4-4-2 in the second half. But first game, he was slow on the ball, caused a lot of turnovers with his poor forward passing because it wasn't the same passing that we've seen from him this season struggled against the press which is something I don't really say a lot about when it comes to Mateo Kovacic and was sloppy on the ball when he conce when we conceded the second goal because it came off another Mateo Kovacic turnover. I thought uh, Muller had fouled him in the build up leading up to it but in reality he was just too slow on the ball he just got dispossessed and straight off the counter attack Bayern Munich scored their second goal and if it wasn't game over before then it was definitely game over by the time it was 2-0 did start to improve his performance so I won't say too much about it plus he's still by far and away our player of the season by a mile I don't I think maybe Mason Mount comes close bar that I don't think anyone else really comes close to being player of the season it was just a bad performance at the wrong time but a lot of players well some players I think had their heads in the beaches at some points and you can give him an excuse for it but it still doesn't make it okay because we still know the task that was at hand i'm gonna go a bit more into that in one of my later points but first point mateo kovacic poor performance from him second one kepa caballero whatever goalkeeper you put in goal it doesn't make much of a difference it's barely made any difference for us this season that also leads into my third point but i'm gonna stick into this one for now Caballero wasn't at fault for any of the game for any of the goals you could say maybe you could have come out a little bit quicker for the Lewandowski penalty for the first goal but he's 36 he's our sub goalkeeper I've always said when it comes to substitute goalkeepers you can't really expect them to be amazing goalkeepers because they were amazing goalkeepers they wouldn't be a number two goalkeeper they'd be somewhere else playing in a number one position Caballero is decent like he's solid he's a good shot stopper I'll give him that bar that He's just average, but he's your sub goalkeeper. And we saw this in February as well when Kepa got dropped for Caballero. And it didn't really make much of a difference. It all depends on whether Kepa's confident or not, in my opinion. Because as a player, in terms of ability, I think Kepa is still better than Caballero. I just think his, co his confidence is just drained. And it's got to a point where he doesn't believe in himself. And I've said plenty of times in these videos, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in yourself for you. Especially in a game as cutthroat as a football game. So, Kepa Caballero makes barely any difference. Both of them, we still concede goals. There's still defensive errors. There's still goalkeeping errors. Not going to go into Caballero too much of this performance because, like I said, I don't really think he did much wrong. It was We were just playing a better team with a much weakened Chelsea side compared to the first leg. And he played the first leg as well. And I don't think... It, nothing really stands out from the first leg. They had a bad performance in, so... It don't really make much of a difference to me but that leads on to my third point 
and that is defensive organization. The reason why there's no real difference between whether Kepa starts or Willy Caballero starts is because our defensive our defensive organization is just a joke. And you can try and I said earlier you can try and understand players not being at 100 percent you can understand them looking at the big situation that's facing us and everything we have to try and overcome and especially conceding a goal seven minutes in. Can't really blame players for having heads drop and just thinking, what's the point? Or just thinking 90 more minutes and my season's over and this tie looked done and finished already in, in the first leg. But still, the way we collapsed, it looked like towards the last 10 minutes I was very worried it was going to be like the same situation for Spurs Bayern where that team gave up against Bayern and they conceded two free goals in the last 10 minutes and Bayern started getting a little flurry of goals towards the last 10, 15, 20 minutes and it was because the defensive organisation again the third goal Taliso gets literally a free run into the box and a free shot on goal and Emerson's just ball watching and he doesn't see him. Emerson not bad on the ball today. I'll be real. He d on the ball wasn't that bad. His build-up helped for the only goal that we scored when Neuer palmed out straight into Tammy's feet. It was a good driving cross from him for the first goal. Bar that, defensively, still looked shaky. First off, a bit better than the second half. Second half, you can blame him for both of the goals. I blame him more for the third goal than the fourth goal because the fourth goal, I think Lewandowski was running through on the back post and Emerson should have had him anyway, but he had another player in front of him as well that he had to mark as well and he was stuck in a 2v1 position. It wasn't going to go down well for him anyway in that situation, so I don't blame him too much. Second goal though, when Mateo Kovacic got, and I've only just seen this in my notes, the second goal, when Mateo Kovacic gets dispossessed, Christensen is literally on the byline and Kurt Zuma's the only defender left in the middle. And this is exactly what I mean when I say defensive organisation is a joke. We didn't prepare for what if he got dispossessed. Christensen, to be fair, got back into position very quickly, but it was still a rush for him. The same as it was still a rush for Lewandowski and the Bayern players, but they're under less pressure. They've just capitalised on our error and now we have to go from being in a position of control with the ball to now having a quick counter-attack on us with their best player 20 yards out from goal. Christensen did the best he could do coming back, but he was still too far forward anyway and it was going to be a hard enough job for him. Kurt Zuma got stuck in a 2v1. To least, um, who is it? Perisic was free on goal just is what it is but defensive organization has been poor for us throughout the season if there's one thing i will criticize frank lampard for this season because he's had a lot against him this season the one thing i will criticize him for is the defensive organization because i think that's just been poor all season and regardless of what we tried to do it hasn't changed and people will say look at the tools that he's had but Look at the goals that we've conceded as well. I mean, I'm getting some of the stats here. 79 goals all season. A ratio of 1.44 1, 1 goals a game, which is the worst it's been since the 1991 season. 54 goals conceded in the Premier League, the seventh worst record in the league this season. And Norwich have conceded more goals than us post-lockdown and nobody else in the Premier League. Let's be real. You can say he hasn't got the tools that he has. But our defence isn't worse than Brighton's. Our defence isn't worse than other teams who have got relegated. But we've been playing like that throughout the whole season. And that is a coaching problem. Lampard is a growing manager. So hopefully that's an aspect of his tactical game that can improve. But right now for this season, that's just been poor. But now the season's done. Let's hope we can just close that up, kick it out, forget it ever happened. And hopefully we can get some reinforcements in. Fourth point, test of character. And that's what I think Lampard was trying to do with the lineup. I think he was trying to assess the mental capabilities of a lot of, a lot of the players, try to see their effort levels and try to see how they cope and how they continue to cope with the added, with the added pressure, I'd say, or the added tests that they had to overcome. Because being 3-0 down with three away goals, no other team's overcome that in, Prem in Champions League history. Especially going a goal down after seven minutes. Who's still got their heads up? Who's still trying to fight? Who's still showing effort? Lampard's trying to see who's got that winning mentality. And whoever has those winning mentality will be the players that you'll probably see at Chelsea this season. Zuma, Reese James, they both struggled. But the effort level was there. And they kept going from the first minute to 90. And it was a hard opposition for them. So you can give them credit for at least keeping the effort levels up. Because you couldn't say that for a lot of the players. Emerson, Christensen, two players I'm going to go into as well. They look good on the ball, but defensively look very sloppy at times. 
Christensen from the start, he's the one that let Lewandowski in too early. There was too much space in between him and the right back. It was just easy for him. And defense, and he distributed the ball well, but offensively, when it came to one on ones, 50 50s, it was just poor from him. And he was one of those players who didn't have his head up. And I've said in previous videos, I do think he'll have another season at Chelsea, but it's definitely last chance saloon for him next season. Final point this is a good season for us only for this season because of all the situations that we've had with Eden Hazard and the transfer ban and having the most inexperienced side in the Roman Abramovich era. It's been a good season for us. We've got top four, made a cup final, didn't win it, is what it is. Just move on. But it's a progressive season for us. So it was happy making top four last season because it was a progressive season as well under Maurizio Sarri, but we went back a couple more steps with him leaving and Eden Hazard leaving as well. So I was happy for us getting top four this season as well. That's it though. Any more of this we want top four debate and we're declining and we're turning into Arsenal. We're turning into the same thing that we mocked them for for years past. Happy with top four this season, happy with top four last season. Next season, we need to see us start competing for titles and we need to continue to see this progression that we've seen under Frank Lampard. We got the attacking reinforcements in, still waiting for Havertz to go over the line. Get the defensive reinforcements we need too and hopefully get a goalkeeper as well. We can definitely challenge for this league title. And I think even with the squad we have right now, we can still challenge. I'm not sure if we go completely across the line, but I do think we can challenge for the title. So next season is going to be very interesting, both for Lampard and both for Chelsea as well. So I hope you guys are excited as, just as much as I am. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the thoughts I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Up the Chelsea.